Right, uh, now it's time to say um, a few words about uh, abstract classes and uh, what you can and you can't do with them. First of all, right, the only thing which is absolutely guaranteed about an abstract class is that you can't instantiate it. That means you can't do new followed by the class name and expect to construct an object of that class because you're not allowed to. Even so, it may in particular have a constructor. In fact, it will have at least one because if you don't put one in, the compiler will create a default constructor. And um, I'll say a lot more about that in a future lecture. Um, also, um, it might not have any abstract methods. And that means that um, it could in fact be a perfectly normal class, but marking it as abstract means just means that you can't instantiate it. Now, um, in general that makes sense because if you think about um, uh, our examples, if you think about shape, what would it mean if you said new shape? And it, well, I mean it wouldn't have any meaning because that object that you create, it wouldn't be a, a, a circle or a, a triangle or something. It just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, and also um, a number. It doesn't make any sense to try and construct an object of class number because the thing itself is just it's just too abstract. So it doesn't make any sense to try and construct an object of that type. So that's why you can't instantiate abstract classes. Okay. Now if we look at um, methods and an abstract method, of course, is, is one without any body. Of course, it just ends in a semicolon. Now, one of the restrictions on it is that it must be an instance method. Right? That means that you can't have an abstract constructor and you can't have an abstract static method. Those are not allowed. And if you try and do uh, do that, you'll get a compiler error. And um, in the class, of course, uh, you must label the abstract method as abstract. And I'm stressing that because um, it turns out, in fact, that um, interfaces, right, the methods in interfaces are also actually abstract, but you don't have to put it in in the case of interfaces. But if you have an abstract method in a class, you've got to mark it as abstract. And if you've got any abstract method at all in the class, you've got to mark the class itself as abstract. Just a single abstract method means that you must mark the class as abstract. Of course, you can mark it as abstract without any abstract methods at all in it, isn't that? That's all. But if you've got a single abstract method in the class, you've got to mark the whole class as abstract. And if you don't, you'll get a compiler error, of course. Now, um, if we look at this restriction on constructors, okay, they cannot be marked as abstract. And it doesn't make sense because what the word abstract really means is um, when the class marks a method as abstract, it means the class is really saying that it doesn't know how to implement that method and it's going to leave it to the subclasses to decide how to actually implement it. Okay? Now, Constructors, of course, are never inherited. 
it's never the case that um, the constructor leaves itself to subclasses to work out how to construct itself because that doesn't make any sense. And um, that's why it doesn't make sense to mark a constructor as abstract. Now, um, if an abstract class has a constructor, of course, it might even end up being called, and in general, of course, it will have at least one. Um, but this won't be directly as a result of new, it will be indirectly as a result of instantiating a subclass. But, um, uh, as I say, we discuss all about um, instantiation and constructors and stuff in a future lecture, so don't worry too much if you don't quite understand that. Now what about this um, static restriction here, that um, you can't mark static methods as abstract? Why is that? Well, let's have a look first of all at what static methods do. Let's just remind ourselves. Um, they're also known, of course, as class methods. And um, one of the things about those is that um, they can only directly access static fields and um, static methods. Not instance fields and not instance methods. Now, I'm stressing directly there because you could, of course, pass in a reference to the static method and the static method could then use that reference to access instance fields or methods in the object referred to. That would be alright. But it can't directly access um, instance fields in the class in which the static method is. And of course the reason for that is that there may be no object at all created in the system. And so there's no uh, this pointer, or reference I suppose I should say, and um, you can't use super either, which I've not talked about yet, but I'll cover that um, in a few slides. Time. Finally, of course, um, you can call um, a static method without having created any object at all just by typing class name dot static method followed by whatever parameters it takes. So um, supposing that an abstract method could be static, which of course it can't, but if it could, then what would you expect to happen if you called it like this? Um, so even if no object exists, what would you expect to happen? Well, of course it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, well, you might say, why doesn't it call um, the subclass version of this static method? Well, um, of course then the question is, um, which subclass? Because this class here could have a load of different subclasses all implementing this static method. Which one do you want to call? Of course it doesn't make any sense. There's no one particular one is more significant than any other. Of course that didn't happen with instance methods of course because with an instance method you always had an implicit pointer to an object. And that object's class is what decided which which uh, subclass would be called, which subclass would be preferred. So there was never a problem with instance methods, but with static methods you haven't got this you haven't got this pointer to any sort of object implicit being passed in to the call. You've got no implicit pointer anywhere, so there's no way of deciding which subclass method to use. So that's why it doesn't make any sense to mark it as abstract. 